All right, welcome back to this series of video. Uh, today we'll focus on the database connection, so how to fetch data from a database, how to add new data to that database, and um, connecting those to the API endpoints that we have and connecting the endpoints to the front end um, uh, that we also have. All right, so um, we'll be doing a um, few things. So the first things uh, we're going to do is on that uh, fetch raid endpoint, we want to connect to the database. We want to create a model for raids. Uh, so we'll do that using Mongoose. So basically Mongoose is a, a wrapper around MongoDB to help you uh, create models, define how the data is going to look like, um, fetch and create and add new data to the database um, in a um, few simple comments. Uh, so we'll see how it works later on. We need to fetch all rates from database and we will need to uh, process the data that we get from the database to make sure we only return what's interesting. So we're going to say process data and uh, res JSON the data. All right. So that's what we are going to do on uh, that endpoint, but also on the create new rates endpoint, uh, except the fetch all will be replaced by adding a new one. <coughs> um, so connecting to the database, creating the model and processing the data is going to be uh, shared across those two endpoints. So in order to not repeat ourselves too much, uh, we'll be creating helper functions um, to make that happen. So first of all, we need to um, install Mongoose um, because um, it's not yet installed, so we need, we need it. And we are going to connect to the database. So the first thing is uh, we get the string, um, the Mongo connect string from uh, the clients. So we are going to um, create the database variable, which is going to be uh, base64 that I didn't import yet. So import base64 from GS base64, so base64 uh, decode. So we had we had it like encoded and we want to decode it. So it's going to be on rec headers, the key database. <clears throat> so this works. Um, so the headers database is not very standard, but it works well because we are querying from um, uh, the server side, Axios server side from the get initial props thing, um, which wouldn't really work um, if it was on the client side because of uh, the cores um, rules. Uh, but we'll see on the client side how to add new uh, raid and how we can bypass this uh, very easily. So here, and we will need to connect to the database here. So that's where we're going to do our first helper function. So let's create a new folder here and we'll get connect.js. All right, so in connect.js, that's where we are going to import mongoose from mongoose um, and we are going to export a function that is going to take database and as an argument and is uh, going to uh, create a new connection create connection and this is going to be to database and we are going to add uh, options so use new URL parser true and we are going to also use unified topology true. All right. So those two options are the recommended default um, to connect to a Mongo database. So I'm just going to get this. 
Um, we are not going to use uh, connect, which is the standard way of connecting uh, with Mongoose. Um, so this is going to actually return um, an object or like a Mongoose, uh, Mongoose object that we are going to use to specify um, models and everything. But everything that we do is going to be tied to that object. It's not like a global connection as you can do generally speaking in Mongoose. And the reason is uh, we're going to execute this in a serverless uh, environment um, using different database. So we have no idea um, if the server is going to be cached or not, if the memory is going to be saved or not. So we want to create a new connection every time. And though, and then we'll, we'll have to make sure we close the connection so we don't um, uh, saturate the connection that we have to MongoDB. Uh, on Mogo Atlas. I think on the free tier is about 100 connections. So we don't want to um, get a server connecting to the, to, to the Mongo Atlas instance and waiting the timeout to get a free spot for a new one. So we are going to do like a, a one connection only thing and it's not going to be global. All right. So this is our connect. So we want to import that so it's going to be connect from helpers connect and that's what we are going to do connection is going to be connect uh, database all right so we're doing database things uh, and we are asking the client to provide um, credentials so most likely everything is going to be going wrong. So we want to do all of that in a try catch block. So if it doesn't work, we want to return Oh, come on. Okay. All right. Miss Maya. Canadian French to Canadian English. All right, so we're going to say data is going to be empty and error is going to be error to string. All right. So we don't. So you would want to do more things in the catch block, but uh, for the sake of simplicity, we're just going to be very very simple. So connection to the database. We have it. We need to create a new model then. And that's where we are going to have a second helper, uh, a second helper function, let's say. And this is going to be the raid schema. So here again, we're going to import mongoose from, oh yes, mongoose. And this is going to be raid schema.js, of course. All right, and this is going to be a constant schema from mongoose schema. All right, and we want to export default a new schema. And this is going to be our schema. So we want a name, this could going to be tip type string, and the default is going to be my raid okay and we want to get a date which is going to be a type string as well and the default is going to be new date and it's going to be two utc strings all right so now we can import that red schema from helpers red schema. So here, what we will do now is create um, an object uh, tied to the connection using this schema. So it's going to be raid is equal to connection model and we're going to call it raid 
using red schema. All right. So now we can, we have this, we are going to fetch everything and that's where um, mangoes kind of shine. It's very, very simple. You just say that you want to um, uh, fetch trades is equal to await. So we are awaiting because um, database may take some time. So everything is asynchronous. So we want an asynchronous function, await um, raid dot find. So basically this will return all of the raids. So yeah. Uh, da -da -da -da. And now we need to process the data. And for that, we will get a new helper function, which is being called uh, process raid dot JS. All right. And this is going to be uh, not importing anything actually. So it's going to be export default. Um, it takes a raid as argument. And this is going to return clean is equal to raid doc. This is going to return. Okay, so that dot underscore doc is um, where you get the actual data uh, from the database um, because just the raid itself coming from Mongoose will have lots of function on methods attached to it, like save, uh, you can push things to specific things, you can populate uh, things and stuff. We are just interested in um, the actual data. So we want uh, an ID, which is going to be clean ID. We want the name, which is going to be clean name. And we want the date, which is going to be clean date. All right. So we have this. We're going to import it. Uh, process raid from helpers process raid and now what we can do is this is going to return uh, an array so it can be empty but uh, when we push things it will be uh, full of things so what we can do is actually process all of that within the return so this is going to be fetch raids map and for each we are going to process raid all right, so for each raid that comes in, uh, the function is going to be called, clean the raid and return um, uh, the data that we want. All right, we are going to get consistent with our error here and say that it's going to come from data. Okay, and we want, of course, to remove this because you don't want to have two rest things. Uh, you could also just return and return. It just doesn't really matter. Okay. All right. So this would be good. All right. So of course we added new um, uh, packets like mongoose and stuff. So you actually need to restart the server. <coughs> oh, it won't just work. All right. Compiling. There we go. And now we can actually build everything. All right. Okay, so everything is good. We now have a, a problem here, and that's just because uh, we changed um, the way data is going to be transmitted. It's not just like a straight array um, uh, coming from the endpoint. It's going to be in the data There we go. Okay. So as you can see, I have already added few things in the database. I'm going to get it there. And let's blur all of this in post process.
All right, so we have three raids that were in the database and we get them here. So they are put in the end of uh, the list just because um, there is no date object associated with them. So first of all, we're going to remove that line at the bottom. We really don't need it. And we will need to change a little bit of the logic um, in our calendar thing. So if there are props uh, raids, we want to uh, create new. Uh, so at what we got from the dummy API was um, the string, but we are now getting dates. So you're not always in control of um, the API endpoints. So you are going to need sometimes to um, process the data a little bit. So in our case, this is going to be uh, date. And for each one, we also want a string, which is going to be new date, uh, the date. And this is going to be to UTC string. All right, so if we save this, invalid date, how come? Oh, maybe that's because we don't. All right, and now that we see, we get them uh, at the right time that we set up in our database. Okay, so all of this is good. Now, what we want to do is um, push new raids. So we are going to steal a little bit of actually uh, pretty much the whole. <coughs> yes, we're going to steal the whole page. And there's just one thing that's going to change in this one is in the add raid um, endpoint is just we're not going to fetch things here, but we are going to add a new one. So it's very, very simple. It's going to be um, added raid is equal to await raid create and then we can create what we want so the name is going to be rec body name and the date is going to be rec body date all right and that's about right except um so we are going to create new raids from the front end. So it's not trivial to um, add new headers that doesn't really exist like database. So you would need to go through the authorization headers, um, process the things. We are going to keep it very, very simple. We are just going to get it uh, as another field um, in the body request. So base64, database, raid, regimen, and this is going to be process raid, add raid. Okay, so all of this would be working. Now we need to build the front end part. So for the sake of simplicity, we are going to just uh, uh, do the logic and not um, the actual design, but that's going to come in later when we do like a refactoring because we need to refactor lots of things into that project anyway. So we will want a few variables. So one is going to be name, set name, you state uh, my raid. Uh, date, set date, use state, and now we are going to want new date to ISO string in this one. So it's easier to uh, manipulate uh, in a string. So you could use um, fancy HTML5 uh, element or whatever. Um, but for the sake of simplicity, we're just going to do like a text. Um, a text string. So yeah, if you want to add fancier date picker, whatever, it's your call. And we also want a function which is going to be um, asynchronous with no arguments. 
and this is going to be what uh, actually send to the endpoint uh, information that we want. So I'm going to copy paste this and we'll have a few things that are going to be changed. So first of all, we are not getting things, we are posting. We don't want to worry about the base URL because we are in the client side all the time now. So we will just query add raid and you we are also going to pass uh, the database uh, information not as a header but as a field uh, a regular field uh, it's going to be easier and you don't have to worry about cores and authorization and stuff and browser supports and everything it's just going to be another field so this is going to be database is equal to query ID. We don't have access to the query object that's in get initial props, but we pass that information to the props itself. So we have access it in the, in the database props query dot ID. All right. And we also want the name and we also want the date. All right. So that would work. And we'll see what we're going to do with this uh, response later. <clears throat> Here we are going to add a new section and we are going to do new input type text. The value is going to be name name as a JavaScript uh, variable and the on change is going to be e equal set name e target value close the input let's go for a second one input type text the value now is going to be the date on change is equal to e set date e target value closing the input and we need a button let's say that's gonna be a new raid <clears throat> and on click we want this to actually execute the send new raid and we will be good. All right. So we have um, our beautiful form, uh, form here. I'm going to zoom a little bit. Um, and basically we are going to be adding new things. So let's see if I forget something. My super raid, it's going to be happening on the 14th, for instance. Let's say 14, add a new raid, compiling, and I actually do everything. And we have um, here in the network tab, I don't know if you can see, all right, here we have the response from the endpoint. So everything is good. The only problem is it didn't pop uh, straight up. You actually have to reload get the new initial props, everything, and then you see your information. So it's all good and it's all good and everything is nice, but we can actually do um, a little bit of dynamism. So you see the raids straight up when it when they happen. And this is going to happen in that send new raid. So what we need to do first is we are going to add a new uh, uh, use state a new state for that uh, uh, component and this is going to be uh, raids set raids and this is going to be use state props raids so we are going to get all the raids that we got from props that we get from the get initial props save them into a state and pass those uh, raids 
uh, as a prop to our calendar component. This will allow us to dynamically add new raids without needing to reload anything. So just to do that and making sure uh, nothing change is going to be like this. We compile, everything is good. We still have our uh, raid that we fetch from the, the data, but now we have access to set new raids, set raids, sorry. So we are going to set raids. Uh, so here you would need to verify the data is actually um, well formatted and everything, but yet again, for the sake of simplicity, we're just going to bypass this. So set raid is going to be equal to all of the raids that we have uh, now, and we are going to add response data. So that's the data that we get from um, the response on Axios. And on that data, there is a data object again, uh, data. So this would be enough to just add new things. So there we go. It's rebuilt. We're going to reload to make sure there's no funny business going in. And we are going to say, um, uh, uh, dynamic added raid and this one is going to happen on the 10th and if we go and do like this it didn't work for what reason uh, set raids okay so it was added, but not uh, okay. Okay, there is funny business going in. Okay, so maybe what we added here was not right. Let me check here. Uh, dynamic added raid. Uh, okay. All of this looks good. Response data data. Okay, so what's going on here? Where is it? Okay, so where is it? So my super raid, for some reason doesn't exist. Oh, that's because he was not on the right date. Okay, let's try it again. Uh, let's try it again. Alors, static. So we're just going to remove all of the raids here. Let's go. It's not the perfect interface because there is a lag on top of it. All right, so Let's reset everything. Okay, so we have all the resets. We have static added raid on the 10th. All right, on the 10th. Okay, there we go. And now we will be Adding our raids. Set raid, set raid, set raid. Okay. With a dynamic, dynamic added raid and on the 11th. 
and there we go dynamic added raid so maybe we just needed to reload everything for some reason sometimes uh out reload doesn't work as we want uh, but uh yeah basically uh that's it so now if i provide that string that i have as my url um to anyone uh they can see all of the raids i added they can also add their own raids and that's where you might want to add a new uh, a new user so i'll show you how to do things like this so you want to do to go to connect here in the mongo atlas i'm going to here and you want to go back here and you can add new users uh, that can access that uh, collection or that database and you may want to add a read-only uh, user so basically you would just go here select read-only enter database password and you can do uh, just the same as we did here but with the user and password of the read-only so people can only read the rates that you yourself add uh, but if you want to share your actual good string um, you can just do it and this will work uh, here so there you go you have the, the whole project and this is going to be um, hosted on the calendar.classicworldtools.com uh, so if you want to create your own database um, let's go do it uh, add your uh, connection string and you can add your uh, raid yourself and um, and uh, broadcast them if you want uh, read only for your guild members or whatever and um, yeah that would be um, that would be all so the next step would be to refactor things so i might do a little bit of design and everything um, off camera um, making sure everything looks a little bit nicer and um, yeah handling all the errors and everything but uh, yeah if you want to set a static database you can also do that uh, using uh, the now secrets uh, option so you can search for now secrets uh, now.sh secrets on google and you'll see how you can um, add secrets to your now account and uh, push them into your code uh, it's very simple and but then you would bake the database right into your code but you could host, host it yourself and you don't have to provide any of your password and uh, username and all of that to people you want to show your rates to um, all right so i think that's pretty much all for that uh, project and um I think the next one is going to be building um, a resume in Gatsby. Uh, so I'm going to do that over the weekend, I think. And um, after that, we will be doing uh, a lot of uh, research into passing and serializing because um, it looks like uh, the next big project is going to be the graph object notation. And I think there is a real need for something like this. Uh, so yeah stay tuned and if you want to know more you can subscribe and uh, and uh, i'll keep popping in your feed all right uh, see you in the next video and cheers